So that's the contents of my slide. Now, when we started to work on OpenStack, the way the authentication works is the user has a username and password in the Keystone database. Keystone is a service of OpenStack that does identity management. You have a username and password there, you authenticate, you get a Keystone token, and you give the Keystone token to the OpenStack service. So what we wanted to do was to implement federated identity management in a protocol independent way because we recognize there's no standard accepted protocol. And so it's all about trust management really. It's not about protocols, it's not about anything, it's about trust management. So we, we, we had three levels of trust management. Managing the IDPs you trust, managing the attributes from the IDPs you trust, and then managing how you authorize people from, from that. So there were three different functionalities, list of trusted IDPs, list of trusted attributes from IDPs, and then trusted mappings to take these attributes and map them into the authorization in terms of, in terms of keystone roles. Um, and then we also wanted to manage LOA, but that, that concept was just too far out for the OpenStack people to even really grasp. So we can do that by sticking it as an attribute in the SAML assertion, and then we can get LOA in, in that way. So, so now it becomes the user authenticates to the IDP, gets a token, gives a token to Keystone, Keystone then turns the token into its token, and off you go back, back from square one. However, when you start to do AbFab, you find that AbFab doesn't work in that way at all. It's not like SAML where you get redirected to the IDP and you said you password to the IDP. With AbFab, you actually talk to the service and the service talks to the IDP. So you're sending your messages to the service and the, mess and the service is talking to the IDP behind itself. So that's a different way of working. But the, you get an encrypted tunnel set up. So when you put your username and password into your client, it goes through an encrypted tunnel to the, to the IDP. So we had to develop a mechanism that would work for both SAML and, and for um, uh, AppFab. So this, this is where we did it. We, we, we had three methods, and this was a plugin, similar to what you were doing, having a plugin, um, and you had get IDP request, negotiate, and then validate the IDP request. And that worked okay. So here is a demo of working with, uh, it's, it's actually a screenshot because the reason this was done a year ago and it was done using, using the uh, Havana uh, release and of course we're now two releases further down, we're getting ready for the Juno release so we don't actually have this software working anymore because we're trying to keep up to date. All I've got is the screenshots from when we did the demo. So you went, so with the command line client you went to OpenStack, uh, you, you put in the, the, the URL you said you wanted to do federated. We put in a new keyword, minus F, meaning federated. I want to do federated login. And what comes back is the list of trusted IDPs. And one of those is the Moonshot set of IDPs. So we select Moonshot. And then what pops up is the, okay, is the Moonshot selector where you put in your, uh, your username and password. And this is very similar to the Edurom. Those, how many, are most people here familiar with Edurom? Yeah, so Moonshot is working like Edurome and it stores your credentials actually in the same place as, as Edurome stores them and in fact what we managed to successfully demonstrate was University of Mercia in Spain and Kent using the Edurome infrastructure but using the, the AbFab protocol pigging it over Edurome and actually uh, logging into our cloud service from Mercia and us logging back into them sending the sending the, uh, the SAML assertion as an attribute embedded in the radius response of the Edu Roam infrastructure and that, and that worked that worked nicely. Uh, let's just go back again. Um, so after, you've, after, you, uh, after you type in your username and password it comes back and says which project or which tenant are you at. It used to be called tenant, it's called project now, they've changed the terminology. You choose your project that you want to log into um, and then after that it, uh, it, it comes in, it does the command. So it's quite simple for the user uh, to use and that, that was fine. So the next thing we wanted to do was integrate all of this into core release because, because OpenStack is changing so rapidly every six months we can't be modifying <coughs> our code. You know, we, you get a one year research project, there's no longevity in that and there's no 
ongoing support and maintenance. So we wanted to get into core release and then we can forget about it because once it's in the core release, people like Red Hat and IBM will support the code for us from, from then onwards. So we started to push it through the core release. They, they, they made a strategic change. They didn't want it as a plugin anymore. They wanted to use Apache as a front end to OpenStack. Uh, this meant less code for them to support. If, if they can stick all the federation as Apache, Apache plugins, they don't have to do anything inside Keystone for it. Uh, and also, the Apache code should be more debugged than the Keystone code because it's got a larger user community. So there are double, double reasons for doing that. They accepted uh, that we should have a list of trusted IDPs. They accepted that you need to have trusted attribute mappings for authorization. They didn't accept that you need to have a list of trusted attributes. We're still pushing for that to go into their trust model. So at the moment, all the attributes that come through are equally trusted, which, you know, to my mind is wrong because if my university presents a credit card number, um, we shouldn't accept it. And if my bank presents my university email address, we shouldn't accept it because we should know which attributes should be coming from which IDPs. But we're still trying to push to get that into the core release. Okay, so this is basically how it works. The first release, which was Ice House, that was April of this year. Yeah, that's right, April of this year. Um, it supported Shibboleth uh, or ModMelon, SAML 2 only. So you couldn't have any different other plugins in the first release. And the, the plugins set all the attributes as environmental parameters which come across the keystone. And then there's the mapping, and it was a SAML mapping, so it was hard-coded into the code that this was going to be SAML. And it did the mapping and the attributes. And then they had a hack in there that if you use mod melon, the parameters came over in a slightly different way to mod shape, so they had a hack in to remove the melon string. Not a not a ideal solution, but anyway, it, it, it was starting to get into the core release. So now in the current release, it's better. We've managed to get, get it so we get a default mapping which is not tied into a protocol, and any protocol can use the same mapping, uh, and we would hope that all of the plugins will more or less send the information in the same format. If a particular plugin sends information in a different way, then we can now do a specific mapping for that plugin. That means we've now got an extensible infrastructure where you add a new, a new plugin uh, and you either say use the existing default mappings for the attributes that come across or we have a specific one for that, for that plugin. So that's the, that's the design implementation that exists today. Um, we've got a Moonshot IDP operating. We've got a Moonshot plugin which has come from Janet. Uh, at the moment it's not talking to our Moonshot IDP but that's where we're at. Um, and we've modified Horizon OpenStack dashboard to support federated authentication. I'll show you that in the demo, because um, th so you can actually log in with your browser. Um, and we're waiting for Moonshot code to be plugged into browsers. Because, because your client is talking to the server and the server's talking to the IDP, it can't use the normal redirection mechanism. It has to specially, specifically form a, form a Moonshot AppFab package to send to your service provider and that's why you need this extra code in your browser so we can't we we haven't got a browser that works with it at the moment i've got we, we can show federated horizon with saml which i'll show you but not with moonshot because we need this plugin for the browser to be to, to come along okay uh, so let's 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 do um let's do a, a a demonstration of federated logging so this is the that's, a no, that's the normal OpenStack Horizon login screen there. You put in your username and your password because it expects Keystone to have a username and password. What we've done is we've added federated login below and this now goes and gets the list of trusted identity providers and gives you a drop down list of trusted ones so you can choose the IDP you want uh, and then you can sign in. When you do that, you'll now see that you've come through to our IDP. Now, this is the, this is the simple SAML PHP modified uh, IDP, which supports Facebook, OpenID, Twitter, Google, the other ones. We modified it to be a, you know, like you were talking about, a gateway that supports all the protocols. So you can actually log in with any of these. Actually, some of them have since stopped working. That project's finished now, so we don't have any manpower to go back and update that, because as these 
as these IDPs change the way they're actually doing their protocol, we need to update that, but unfortunately. But it still works for Facebook and and uh, and, and the open ID, uh, Google, sorry, Google and, uh, and Facebook still work. I'm not sure about Twitter, I don't think that does work anymore. Um, and then the UK Access Management Federation, that goes off to the where you're from service, which again, just like your diagram of going off the where you're from, that no longer works here because they keep updating their metadata, right? So we don't, we're not updating the metadata anymore, so it, that doesn't work, that link's broken. Um, but, uh, and, and then this is local login where it goes straight to the local LDAP, so you can actually even plug in a local, local LDAP as well. But whichever way you log in, what happens is a SAML assertion goes from the IDP back to the browser and then the browser gives the SAML assertion back to, to Keystone. So it's, it's a standard thing. So, okay, continue. And you'll now find the first thing we get to do is we have to choose a project. This is the problem, this is the issue you're talking about. You've got to log into a project in uh, Keystone, so you have to choose the project that you want to log into. And when you choose the project, you get back the normal dashboard. And so we're now logged in to OpenStack via, um, th this is a known bug actually in, 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 uh, in Horizon, it's nothing to do with us. So I'm now logged in and I can now do everything that a normal user could do with Horizon Dashboard. So that's federation added into, into OpenStack, into the core release. So if you get the Juno or the Kilo release, you won't need to do anything in order to get SAML support and also when we finished our code, AppFab support. And they've also got OpenID Connect is in there as well. So if you, if you use the Apache OpenID Connect plugin, that will also work out of the box. So that's great stuff. We're now getting out of the box federated access to OpenStack. So let's go back to, <clears throat> once you've got that working, you're not finished yet, because your next problem is user access rights. Not all users from one IDP should have the same access, obviously, and different users from different IDPs may want to have the same access. So how are you going to do that? Okay, so what we could do is we could give different users different identity attributes by updating their IDP. Unfortunately, that's not a really non-start because IDPs don't allow you to do it. We could create a virtual organization, um, and then, but then we might need to have some attribute aggregation or something like that, um, or require a VO service, or we could add attribute mappings specific for the user. Now, we already have attribute mappings because we've added that as part of Keystone. So it seems like that is a sensible way if we can update the attribute mappings, we can actually put different mappings for different users and actually get them into the into the right VO. Um, but so we can't we can't update IDPs attributes. We said we can't do that. Um, so VOMS is what grids are typically using. So what we thought, well, if we've got attribute mappings, why don't we actually use that as a an alternative way of VOMS, we can already put people into different different groups. So why don't we use this as an equivalent of VOMS? But, but, but we've got to pull this whole group of people from the commercial world around who are not, you know, they're not as far as advanced in terms of federation and VOs, and we've got to drag them with us and show them step by step why it's necessary and needed. And if we can do that, we can get it integrated into Keystone, and then in phase two, which is putting these APIs in, we'll be able to make calls out to the existing VOMs and use it. No, I agree. Right. It's the old database concept yeah. that yeah. if you enter information in two places... You don't want to. No, you want to you enter once, use many times. Right. right. But in order to do that, we've got, them, we've got to get them first into the mindset, we even need to enter it once. They don't even see they need to enter it once yet. Uh, right? When we get the VR stuff of entering it once, then they'll see, okay? So, so, so what we can do now is we can, we can do a, a, a demo. Of, I'll forget about community of interest because that's a, an app file. Right, so Craig did work where he did external VO management by plugging into the pipeline, right? So Craig, Craig actually has already integrated an external VOMS into Keystone by plugging into the pipeline. However, as I said, our approach is we don't want to be plugging stuff in. We want it to be core. 
so that everybody else will support it. And when we die and when we get no more funding, it will continue to exist beyond us. That, that's, to me, to be a critical success factor. If I can get Red Hat and IBM and HP to support what we do when we're no longer around, it's a big success. If we just do a plug-in into Keystone, then our funding goes, the plug-in goes and it dies because the things move on, it doesn't work anymore and there's no one to fix it. Yeah? So we still could get the, the Hi-Fi plug-in into the... Uh, the core release, if we fought that battle of actually getting that part, because you can you know, optionally configure it in or out depending on what you're yeah, deployment yeah. that you want to Yeah, if, 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 yeah. I mean, it depends if they take it on board to support it, because as, as you know, if, if they say this is an optional plugin support by this external group, when they move the way the pipeline works or whatever, they re engineer Keystone and it no longer works, who's going to update it to make it work? Yeah? So, so you, you're gonna do a demo now? yeah, I'll do a demo now. So, so, so what I've done is I've done federated login to OpenStack. Um, those people who didn't see it first time around, don't worry, you'll see it again in a minute because I'm going to be logging out and logging in to show a demonstration of VO. So I've just logged in as a normal user, and we've got a new um, new uh, menu item uh, in the which is my VOs, my VO roles, and when I click on that, it will show me that I'm a member of the Classy Virtual Organization. I'm a member and I'm an expert within the Classy Virtual Organization. So I can join any VO role that I want, provided I know three pieces of information. One, the name of the VO. Two, the name of the role. And three, the secret. Okay, so there's a secret that's distributed to VO members to say, if to join this VO role, you need to present this secret, okay? So I'm going to do a join request. Okay, I'm going to join the Classy uh, project. I'm going to join as a manager. Okay, and I type in the secret and I send the request. Uh, join request failed, unable to find VO Classy. Whoa, this was working. This is just... This is the demo effect. This is the demo effect. This is crazy. This is crazy. Okay, um, I'm going to log out. Okay, I'm going to log in as admin now. So let me just log in as admin to see what is going wrong here. Okay, so again we've added to the administrator VO admin. So the uh, the VO admin, he sees all the, uh, so you can see there is a manager there in class E, okay, um, and he can edit the VO role information. Uh, and if he edits it, he can change the, uh, the, the name of the VO, he can change the role, he can add a description. There is, um, he can change the secret that's needed to uh, uh, enroll to it. The, the role can be enabled or disabled. If the role is disabled, you can't join to it. And there's also automatic joining. If you click automatic joining, then when a user comes in and presents the secret, they're automatically straight in as a member. If you don't click automatic joining, when you join the VO, it goes into pending queue. And then the manager goes into the pending queue and looks at who's joining and says, okay, I okay him, I okay him, I reject him. So it's like a two-phase. Now, why do you want that two-phase? Well, because we've got a secret for the VO, and I give Jens the name of the VO and the secret, if Jens was being a bit of a naughty boy, he might pass the secret on to Alan and say, hey, Alan, come and join this in this role. And then you could come in, and if it was automatic joining, you'd be automatically in, and you could pass the secret around. Now, for some, that might be okay. If it's a very low-level resource that you want lots of people to join, you, you know, you might want to have automatic joining. All but graduates to this operate that way. Yeah, exactly. But, but if it's something a bit more protected, you don't want automatic joining. So in that case, when, when Jens passes it on to Alan, the manager will come in, he'll see Jens, he'll say, okay, Jens can join, say, Alan's, I don't know who Alan's still is, He's, and he'll reject your request, okay? Another feature we've got in there is about hackers. If hackers try and hack in, and they do password cracking, okay, so they say, ah, oh, I know there's a VO, and I want to be the administrator of this VO, and they just try password cracking, after three attempts, they get blacklisted, okay? So there's a list of blacklisted users as well. So um, we, we, we guess that three attempts is pretty secure. No one's going to be able to crack a password or a pin in three attempts, hopefully. 
Um, and so they would be blacklisted. And then once they're blacklisted, they can't do anything because the minute they try to log in with the IDP, the IDP will see that they're blacklisted and they won't be able to do anything with the VO. But the it's VO also code. easy to encrypt that, right? If, if you forget your password and give three tries, then... Yeah, three tries, then you're, you're blacklisted. So you can't just, yeah, but the, but the manager can go in, okay? Um, he can go in and he can manage. So if I go into here um, and uh, if, I, if I look here, for example, manage VO role memberships, and I go into here, there's a blacklisted users. So I can look at the blacklisted users and, ah, that's why I wasn't allowed, that's why I failed, I'm already blacklisted, I must have been doing it. So you can see that the reason I couldn't do the join and manage is because I've been blacklisted. I must have been playing around before I forgot that. So now I'm going to remove myself from the blacklist. That would probably allow me to, uh, to join. Okay. This devil was even better than before. It was, yeah, exactly. But maybe, maybe removed from blacklist is not. Oh, I've got a ticket. Right. Right. Removed from blacklist. Successful. Okay, that's good. Even though it's not removed, I have been removed. Or it says I've been removed anyway. So, um, let's go back now and look at uh, my video roles. Now, remember, I'm the administrator. So, as administrator, I can see all the video roles in the video. As a user, I can only see my own one, but an administrator has permission to see, to see all of them. Um, okay. So let me log out now as an administrator. And I'll show, I'll show the federated login. So here's the federated login. Uh, oh, first of all, I'll have to remove all my cookies because, um, because I've done federated login, then um, it's not going, you're not going to see it this time around. So I need to, I need to, uh, Remove that cookie. Um, I need to remove these cookies. Okay. And now I think, uh, now I think I can probably, I think I can probably now do federated login without it just automatically single signing in. Yeah, okay. So this this has now gone to our SAML IDP, which is a multi-protocol, simple SAML PHP IDP, which allows you to log in with Facebook, uh, Google, Twitter, uh, UK Access Management Federation, etc. So if I do uh, log in via local can tell that, I log in and um, I'm now having to choose my Keystone project, I choose my project and then I'm logged in. So I'm now, I'm now logged into uh, Keystone uh, via Horizon, and I can look at my VO roles, which are here. So the thing is, what this is allowing now is users, users can self-manage their VOs. Um, and, and join and resign as well. If I, if I don't want to be this role anymore, I can just resign it, and then that would take me, take me out, of the, out of the role. And it allows... The key thing is it allows you to manage VOs without knowing what information an identity provider is providing about you. Um, because you log in, your identity provider sends us a heap of attributes and identifiers or whatever to Keystone. It picks out your unique ID and your IDP and then it creates an automatic mapping rule to put you into the VO. Uh, and then you're in. Every time you log in then you go back into the same, to the same VO. If you, if you choose that if you choose that project. Okay, so uh, any questions or? Okay. Thanks very much. Okay.